my member my members area in Kajabi is turning into a monster. Any tips on organizing it so that it's easier for clients to find the training that they are looking for? Well, you know, this is like congratulations because you know you're growing and so as you have grown, you know, things get a little bit unruly. And these are these are growing pains that do, do come with this kind of work and we are no stranger to it here at front row you know we we had to deal with this many of you who have been with us um for a long time know that we completely revamped the membership site because it was just the content was just out of control so the way that we did this basically was we took a full inventory we like and made it tangible so like i printed out pages and pages so that i could like get my hands on everything and be like, okay, you know, I, and I can make stacks. Like I like to make stacks and visually be able to sort of sort things out. So however you can best inventory your content, do that first. And then once you, once you do that, you want to start thinking in terms of buckets and silos and thinking like, you know, if you don't already have obvious buckets, you know, what, what we did in VIP was we took the word front and made, made it an acronym for foundation roadmap, like all, all of that stuff, right? Like that we explained in the front row framework. And then that gave us, we turned that into our buckets and then put all the content in those buckets. Now, the key here is that it's okay to duplicate because when you start to decide what your buckets are, you're going to know you're going to have some things that are going to fall into a, a couple or multiple categories like not only is that okay i think it's a good thing because as you said what is you want your you want your clients to be able to find what it is they're looking for and that really is the biggest problem uh, for members and for membership site owners is that you know their their members just can't find what they need so in, we decided in order to, you know, we wanted everybody to just be hit in the head with what they were looking for. So that if they were like, you know, if they go to one area to find something about a certain topic, it would be there, but it might be in two other areas as well. So I think it's fine to duplicate. Other very tangible solutions are software, is software like Searchy. So Searchy.io, so that's S E A R C H ie.io it was you know it's owned by I, i'm pretty sure Stu mclaren owns it um or has a large stake in it and you know Stu is like the king of membership sites and he came out with that program called tribe and um I, we have not invested in searchy you know before this call i spent a lot of time uh, researching it again it's been a while since i've looked at it it's quite expensive um, and it's kind of like they host your videos. And so uh, my apprehension there is just like, that's one more place where all my content will be. And once you go to the trouble of uploading that much content and it's sitting there on that platform, like you're kind of married to it forever or until you decide to maybe go in another direction. I mean, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's a drastic I think it's a, it's, it's a big commitment. So uh, we may make the move to Searchy, but the, the thing with Searchy is that your members can type in any word into a search bar. So it could be like fake, Facebook pixel, okay? Not only does like in a regular search bar, like in, in our membership, if you typed in Facebook pixel, stuff will come up but probably only what is, is written in any sort of description or title, okay? But with Searchy, if you type in the word Facebook pixel, it reads the videos. So every time you say the word Facebook pixel, it's going to bring up those results as well, which is super helpful, right? Because if you think, oh, Jen, Jen had a, a live call. I don't remember what it, where it was, when it was, but... I know they were talking about headline um, headlines, you know, and how to write a good headline. So you could go in and type in headline or just headlines and any video where those words were uttered by me or anybody on the video, 
is going to pop up. And I think that's pretty, pretty amazing. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So, you know, you could just, so, so my answer is like the, the biggest thing is to just go to the trouble of really doing a really complete inventory. Um, and then the other thing is washing down anything you really don't think people are going to be looking at archiving it. So taking a big load of content that is old, you know, so you could look at everything that is before 2021, let's say. So anything before 2021, like live calls, especially, you can just put those into an archive so that people can still get to them, but maybe they just take up less visual space. Um, so if you've got things that are just starting to just that people have to scroll and scroll and scroll through something, consolidate that stuff into an archive and just label it. They can still access it, but it's not making them, you know, it's not making them continuing to have, to have to scroll. 